What's up everybody? So welcome to my channel, Green Man Grow 7. I'm Sean Knight and today the philodendron Florida beauty. Look at that. So I wanted to do a video today about this beautiful plant because of its beauty and how it's captured me. Can you see those veins, the purple veins that is there? Some people say red, but I don't see it as red, I see purple. Uh, maybe a burgundy, maybe that would be more accurate, a burgundy. And the underneath of the, let me turn it around, the underneath of the plant, the leaves, can you see that? That burgundy also. Isn't that beautiful, the veining of the plant? And so I just wanted to come and talk about this plant since I've had it. Talk about watering it, talk about the soil, talk about the growing. So these plants are tropical plants, which means that they grow in the forest and they grow in the tropical forest. And so they are climbers. They climb up on trees and they have their mutual existence with the tree. So it gets from the tree, but it also utilizes the tree to be able to live. I'm a little apprehensive about that because these plants will grow huge. And so I'm going to now input some video footage so that you could see the plant a little closer. But as you're watching this footage, look at how the plant is so sturdy. Look at the plant and see how hardy it is. The leaves, the veining of the plant, and how beautiful the contrast of the green. How beautiful the contrast with the burgundy, that reddish color that it has. It is absolutely magnificent. And so it's a wonder to me that nature produces such beauty and that we are able to bring that beauty into our homes. And so one of the things that I wanted to talk about because I had to learn this lesson and I want to share this knowledge with you guys Although philodendrons may not be the magnet to uh, bugs like alocasias and or other uh, plants, guess water can be the thing that can take a philodendron out. Water in its soil, too much water when you water it, um, it's sitting in water, so then that leads to having the proper soil and the chunkiness of the different barks and things that you can add to the soil so that it retains moisture, but it allows that chunkiness to be there so that the water will pass through, hit the roots, the roots will absorb the moisture and what it needs, but because of the chunkiness of the soil that you put it in, it's able to ret retain that moisture and give the plant what it needs without holding on to too much water and drowning out the roots. But the other thing is water being left on the leaves. And so philodendrons have this thing where if they have water, you know, a lot of people like to spray and mix their plants. And so if you are a sprayer and a mixer and you leave excess water, and I'm saying that again, if you leave excess water on your plant, then what happens is it can grow fungus and the fungus can take out the plant. And so I just wanted to share that because I had to learn that uh, in my journey of being a plant father. And so th there you go. But look at that again. The philodendron Florida beauty. And it is beautiful. And earlier I said I was a little apprehensive and I'm apprehensive because this is a climber. Like I said, it will climb up on trees. But this is in the pot now, as you can see. But it's going to start to grow more and more and more. And it's going to need a pole because I'm not going to be able to contain it in just a pot because it's just going to be overwhelming this pot and overwhelming the space that it's in in my loft. And then as a result, I'm going to have to put a pole so that it aids it. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. That it aids it so that as it grows up, it can grow up the pole as it would mimicking what it does in its natural environment in the forest with trees. But it's just, it's just captivating. 
captivating that nature produces. And to me, when I look at this leaf, it's like I'm looking at a face, like it's something otherworldly. It's something that is something so captivated that just makes you want to just continue to look at it over and over again. And that's why I say, you know, um, plants mm -hmm. to me, and I'm sure that other plant parents feel the same way. It's like art. It's like looking at a piece of art continuously. Every time you water it, every time you have it in your space, every time you walk past it, when you come back to your home and you walk past it, it's like looking at art. And it's just captivating. It's just beautiful. And so this, again, is the philodendron. Florida beauty and it is such exquisiteness it's it's just amazing that nature produces these things you'll continue to hear me say stuff like this over and over and over again because I just get captivated that's one of the reasons why I got into plants that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be a plant father and to start this channel to share my passion, to share whatever knowledge and experience and mistakes that I made. And so one of the things you will also hear me say is plant nation. And so that's one of the terms of my channel is that we are the plant nation, the people on the planet who have taken up the love of plants, who has taken up the enthusiasm of what nature can provide and that we can try to utilize in our homes, but also being able to learn to mimic its environment. These plants like high humidity. So I have a humidifier in my home. I have a humidifier here in the loft that allows me to mimic what it gets in the forest. And so another thing is like I was saying, the chunkiness of, you know, I held up some bark. So I have some, some bark, some soil. It is um, some lava rocks, some different nature things, some perlite, all mixed up in this soil that allows this soil to be airy. Because a lot of people may not realize it, but as we breathe, the plants breathe in their own way. And even though the plants are in dirt, if you have the right materials within the dirt, it allows that the oxygen can get into the dirt to feed the roots because that's where the plant eats from the water, the fertilizer that we give it, but also the air goes through. But when the soil is too compactive, it's like this. It does not allow for the moisture to leave through water. That's why we have the bark so that the bark allows the water to roll over it go through, go out. And then that way the plant is not sitting within the dirt, sitting within the water, suffocating. So what happens is, is that then the air can get in and the air can help give the plant what it needs. But if we have just those soils that's so compactive and then the water is holding onto it, then my hand is the water, my fist is the roots, and there it is. And then it can't breathe just like we wouldn't be able to breathe. And so then the plant would die and we would get root rot and then the plant would not be able to succeed. But making it chunky and adding those bark pieces and adding the other things, the perlite, it allows that that soil can't be compacted like this, but it opens up and it allows that the water can go through and the air can go through. And then the fertilizer that we give it can be reached in the roots to strengthen the roots, feed the roots, and give the roots what they need. And here it is, the beauty of what it is when we do those things for our plants. I ask that you follow me on this journey, mm -hmm. that you like, subscribe, and you share. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.